The crypto market has been slowly crashing since November 2021, and many believe the bull market has officially come to an end. I am not so convinced, however, and this is simply because of all the upcoming crypto milestones that could be a catalyst for a massive reversal. Today, I'm going to tell you about a few of these upcoming milestones, when they're likely to occur, and what impact they could have on their respective cryptocurrencies. Before I hit you with some hope, I need to make something clear for you folks. If you're here for financial advice, the answer is no. This video is only meant to help your brain grow. Please contact a financial advisor if you're sick of being broke. Also, be aware that I do hold a few cryptocurrencies I'll be discussing today in my personal portfolio, and I'll be sure to point them out to you as we go. If this is your first time at the Coin Bureau, my name is Guy, and this channel is about crypto. My mission is to craft the highest quality crypto content you'll ever know. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, and other info. If this is the kind of stuff you want to be shown, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell and make yourself at home. If you're short on time, you can skip around using the timestamps down below, or you can watch until the end like a true crypto bro. That's it for the intro. Let's start the show, yo. The first upcoming crypto milestone is the most important, and that's a spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States. Disclaimer, I hold BTC in case that wasn't already obvious. To quickly recap, ETF is short for Exchange Traded Fund. ETFs are sort of like stocks, and they make it possible to invest in an asset without having to hold it yourself. Instead, the company which creates the ETF buys or sells the underlying asset depending on the demand for the shares of that ETF. Although there are three Bitcoin ETFs currently trading on US stock exchanges, they are all futures backed. Put simply, they're backed by paper contracts and not physical BTC. As such, Bitcoin futures ETFs have no direct effect on the price of BTC, since they do not create any actual buying pressure for the underlying asset, which is of course, BTC. Physical, aka spot, Bitcoin ETFs, on the other hand, do have a direct effect on the price of BTC since they do create material buying pressure for the underlying asset, BTC. Now, many believe that the billions of buying pressure created by a single spot Bitcoin ETF would be enough to push BTC well past 100k. This would cause the whole crypto market to rally since altcoins tend to follow BTC and I personally believe that the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF will mark the top of the current bull market for BTC. My belief is based on the top signal that the approval of the Bitcoin CME futures provided for BTC during the last bull market. Altcoins rallied in the month that followed, and then the bear market began. There are currently around half a dozen spot Bitcoin ETF applications waiting to be approved or rejected by the SEC, which regulates assets like stocks, ETFs, and yes, cryptocurrencies. The SEC recently rejected a bunch of long-standing spot Bitcoin ETF applications, but three of these applications survived the purge by being delayed. Now, this suggests that they have a high chance of being approved, since they otherwise would have been rejected by the SEC along with the others a long time ago. These are the Bitwise Spot Bitcoin ETF, which the SEC could accept or reject on February the 1st, the Grayscale Spot ETF, which the SEC could accept or reject on February the 6th, and the NYDIG Spot ETF, which the SEC could accept or reject on March the 16th. Mark your calendars. Now, if you want to know why I think the SEC keeps rejecting or delaying spot Bitcoin ETF applications, you can check out my video about that using the link in the top right. The second upcoming crypto milestone is equally as important as the first, depending on who you ask, and that's Ethereum's official transition from proof of work to proof of stake as part of Ethereum 2.0. Disclaimer, I hold ETH and I also bought the shit out of the recent dip, thanks to the four sellers. Anyways, for context, Ethereum began its transition to 2.0 in December 2020, when Ethereum's proof-of-stake blockchain, dubbed the Beacon Chain, went live. Nearly 10 million ETH and counting 
has been staked on the beacon chain since then, which is pretty crazy when you consider the fact that this staked ETH can't be withdrawn, nor can the staking rewards this ETH is accumulating. The next stage of Ethereum 2.0 is called the merge, or the docking, which is when Ethereum's current proof-of-work blockchain will effectively connect to the proof-of-stake beacon chain. Now, the merge was initially expected to occur late last year, but was delayed after a few bugs were found in Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0's codes in the summer and the autumn, respectively. According to the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap, the merge is now expected to occur in Q1 or Q2 of this year, which is the end of March or end of June for anyone who doesn't count quarters. It looks like the merge will happen sooner rather than later, and that's because of all the progress that's been made in the last few months. For example, at the end of December last year, the Kintsugi merge testnet went live. This is expected to be one of the final testnets in preparation for the merge. And more recently, Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin noted that Ethereum 2.0 is 50% complete, and that once the merge and another scaling upgrade called the Surge are finished, Ethereum 2.0 will be 80% complete. To clarify, the Surge will occur after the merge. Now, given that it's been about 13 months since the beacon chain went live, this means we should see the merge happen around four months from now, assuming that the merge accounts for 15% of that additional 30% Vitalik envisions by the end of the year. Besides the obvious effects the merge will have on the price of ETH, it could possibly lead to a surge in altcoins in general, since thousands of cryptocurrencies are tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. If you want to know how high I think ETH could go because of Ethereum 2.0, you can find out by using the link in the top right. The third upcoming crypto milestone is one that not many people have been paying attention to, and that's the launch of Solana's actual mainnet. Disclaimer, I hold soul, and no, I'm not a fanboy, I'm just a fan of the project, despite all the FUD. Anyhow, for those who don't know, Solana is still technically in beta, and this is clearly noted in the top right of Solana's blockchain explorer and the Solana Beach blockchain explorer. Now, while this certainly doesn't excuse the multiple performance issues that Solana's blockchain has seen since it went live in March 2020, it does explain why its performance hasn't been on a par with other fully operational cryptocurrencies. In terms of when we will see Solana's actual mainnet go live, a response to this question in the Solana subreddit by one of Solana's developers notes that Solana's beta phase will last, quote, for a year or so. Now, this response was posted last March, which suggests that Solana's actual mainnet will go live around March this year. However, it looks like there are two more milestones that need to be met before that happens. The first is the introduction of multiple block producers. Solana founder Anatoly Yakovenko mentioned in an interview last year that they're aiming to have eight block producers on Solana in early 2022. Now, I reckon it's reasonable to assume that this increase in block producers would happen slightly before or possibly in tandem with an official mainnet launch. The second milestone is the introduction of on-chain governance, and I suspect that this is a prerequisite for an official mainnet launch because of regulations. Allow me to explain. If Solana Labs single-handedly transitions the Solana blockchain to a mainnet version, This could attract the attention of regulators who would deem the project insufficiently decentralized. If the Solana community votes to transition the blockchain to a mainnet version, however, then Solana Labs can say that it was the will of the community. In other words, Solana is sufficiently decentralized. Now, I will stress that this is just my speculation, and it's a speculation that has its origin in the community-driven mainnet rollouts of other crypto projects namely Near Protocol and Polkadot. On that note, Polkadot's on-chain governance architecture looks eerily similar to Solana's proposed on-chain governance architecture, and I reckon that's no coincidence. If you're looking for Solana and Polkadot updates, I'll leave links to my most recent videos about both projects in the description. The fourth upcoming crypto milestone has likewise flown under the radar, and that's the deployment of Cardano's first DeFi dApps. Disclaimer, I hold ADA, and yes, I do believe it still has potential. 
As I'm sure many of you have noticed, Cardano's ADA coin has taken a serious beating during the recent bear slump. This is because ADA holders were anxiously awaiting the dozens of dApps they were expecting to see after the completion of Cardano's smart contract functionality in September. Unfortunately, overcoming Cardano's concurrency challenges proved to be more difficult than developers initially expected, and basically every Cardano project postponed its deployment. ADA has consequently crashed in the absence of the demand these dApps were expected to create for ADA following Cardano's September upgrade. Despite these delays, however, Cardano's top projects have managed to raise tens of millions of dollars since September from public and private investors, including some well-known crypto VCs. Some Cardano projects even came together to form the Cardano DeFi Alliance in what is likely an attempt to streamline the development of scalable solutions to Cardano's concurrency issues. The three largest Cardano projects are currently SundaySwap, Ardana, and Meld. SundaySwap is a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, and its testnet went live in early December. SundaySwap devs have yet to announce a mainnet launch date, but a recent Medium post suggests they'll be making an official announcement about that in the coming days. Anyone want to bet it'll be sometime in Q1 this year? Now, Ardana is a collateralized stablecoin protocol like MakerDAO, and its roadmap notes that it will be launching in Q1 this year. The significance of Ardana can't be understated because it will make it possible for ADA holders to mint a stablecoin using both free and staked ADA as collateral. Stablecoins are critical to the adoption and expansion of a cryptocurrency's ecosystem, especially when it comes to DeFi protocols. Ardana is also planning on rolling out a stablecoin DEX called DanaSwap in Q1. Consider for a moment that the largest DeFi protocols by total value locked are stablecoin DEXs. Last but certainly not least, we have MELD, which is a lending and borrowing protocol like Aave. MELD's detailed roadmap notes that the crypto elements of its protocol will be completed in Q1, with fiat elements expected in Q2 and Q3. Consider for a moment that borrowing and lending protocols are also some of the highest ranked by total value locked, second only to stablecoin DEXs. Together, these Cardano projects should create a rapidly expanding ecosystem on Cardano with hundreds of thousands of users and hundreds of 100x opportunities, assuming they successfully deploy, of course. Now, if you want to know what else Cardano has been up to lately, check out the link in the top right. The fifth and sixth upcoming crypto milestones are for two cryptocurrencies which are, quote, merged at the hip, and these are Litecoin and Dogecoin. If you watched my recent video about crypto consensus algorithms, you'll know that LTC and Doge can be merge mined thanks to auxiliary proof of work, hence merged at the hip, which is a direct quote from Dogecoin co-founder Jackson Palmer. Fun facts aside, Litecoin is on the cusp of completing its Mimblewimble sidechain, as the MWeb roadmap notes the end of January as the implementation date. Mimblewimble is a privacy protocol proposed in 2018, and it makes it impossible to identify the sender and recipient in any crypto transaction, even though the amounts being transferred can be clearly seen. Mimblewimble is used by the Grin privacy coin, and the Litecoin Foundation actually commissioned a Grin developer to build its own Mimblewimble implementation. In contrast with Grin's Mimblewimble, Litecoin's Mimblewimble will not be implemented at the layer one level. Instead, Litecoin will use Mimblewimble in conjunction with extension block technology to create a sort of privacy-preserving layer two. This layer two will make it possible to send anonymous LTC transactions and will also increase Litecoin's transactions per second, since processing these anonymous transactions requires less computation. More importantly, because the privacy change isn't being implemented at the layer one level, Litecoin founder Charlie Lee believes Litecoin should be safe from the regulatory scrutiny we see with other privacy coins. Now, this is a bigger deal than you might think because there are almost as many Litecoin ATMs around the world as there are Bitcoin ATMs. This means Mimblewimble will make LTC the most accessible cryptocurrency with privacy preserving properties. This will likely create a lot of demand for LTC and lots of positive price action by extension. Now, Dogecoin has a few uh, treats on its recently released roadmap too. 
The Dogecoin trail map contains eight milestones, two of which are expected to be completed in the coming months. The first is an enterprise Dogecoin wallet called the Giga Wallet, which will make it easy for merchants to integrate Doge payments. The second is a Dogecoin software developer kit, which will make it possible to create new Dogecoin products and further facilitate the integration of any existing Dogecoin products, including the Giga Wallet. Even though it's unlikely that these upgrades will have any direct effect on the price of Doge in the short term, the hype alone will probably be enough to make prices pump, especially if Elon Musk starts tweeting about Dogecoin's Starlink integration. Now, I'll leave a link to the full Dogecoin roadmap down below if you want to learn more about that. And if this Starlink stuff is news to you, you need to watch my weekly crypto reviews, latest episode in the top right. The seventh upcoming crypto milestone pertains to Polygon. And disclaimer, I happen to hold some Matic as well. For those unfamiliar, Polygon is Ethereum's leading layer two scaling solution with $5 billion in total value locked by dozens of popular Ethereum dApps which deployed on Polygon's POS chain. Polygon has allocated billions of dollars to building additional Layer 2 scaling solutions, which will all leverage its Matic token. So far, the only Layer 2 Polygon has released besides its POS chain is the Polygon Hermes ZK Rollup, which is the product of Polygon's $250 million purchase of Hermes Network in August last year. Polygon is in the process of producing five additional scaling solutions, and the two that are likely to create the most demand for the Matic token are Polygon Maiden and Polygon Zero. Without getting too technical, Polygon Maiden and Polygon Zero leverage next-generation zero-knowledge technologies, which Polygon believes will be as much as 100 times faster than comparable Ethereum scaling solutions, notably Arbitrum and Optimism. Now, it's not entirely clear when Polygon will be releasing its two scaling solutions, but a recent blog post suggests that we should be seeing Polygon Zero very soon. This makes sense given that Polygon Zero is the product of Polygon's $400 million acquisition of Mir Protocol in December, which makes it the most expensive crypto project purchase to date. In any case, it looks like one of these scaling solutions will be chosen by Coinbase, given that the exchange announced in an August blog post that it will be integrating with Polygon to cut down on costs. As far as I know, this integration has yet to materialize, and that might have something to do with all the bugs that have been found on Polygon's POS chain over the last few months. Never mind the network congestion we've seen because of a blockchain game where you farm sunflowers. Chances are that Polygon's upcoming scaling solutions will be much more secure. And once they go live, there's a high probability that Matic will moon. More about Polygon in the description. The final upcoming crypto milestone I'll mention today relates to Axie Infinity. If the name sounds familiar, that's because Axie Infinity is cryptocurrency's number one play-to-earn game and is also the number one NFT marketplace, depending on the day. This might have something to do with the fact that Axie Infinity has more than 3 million daily active users. To put things into perspective, that's almost three times more than Ethereum's record of 1.2 million daily active users, and also three times more than Bitcoin's record of 1.2 million daily active users. If you're wondering how Axie Infinity can handle all that traffic, the answer is Ronin, a layer two scaling solution specifically built for Axie Infinity by Sky Mavis, the company behind Axie Infinity. Right now, Ronin is permissioned, meaning all the validators on its blockchain are being run by companies such as Binance and Ubisoft. However, Ronin will soon be public and its validators will need to stake the Ron coin, which will also be used to pay for all transaction fees on its blockchain. The Ron coin is currently being distributed to liquidity providers on Ronin's Katana DEX, and this distribution will wrap up on February the 4th. LPs can't claim their RON yet, but the FTX cryptocurrency exchange has recently listed a futures contract for RON, making it possible for traders to speculate on its value. Now, this suggests three things. First, that RON is very valuable, which makes sense given that it's essentially the ETH of the biggest play-to-earn gaming project. Second, that RON will likely list on an exchange shortly after liquidity mining finishes in early February. 
and third, that FTX will look to list the actual Roncoin as soon as it becomes available. And I have a feeling that this listing will have a positive effect on all play-to-earn crypto projects and possibly NFTs too. If you want to learn more about the other top play-to-earn ecosystems out there, look no further than the link in the top right. That's all for today's video about upcoming crypto milestones. If what you heard gave you hope, smash that like button to let me know. Remember to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell before you go. If you've still got some time to kill, check out Coin Bureau clips for behind-the-scenes content that will give you a thrill. You can also follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, but please, don't chill. Speaking of which, my Telegram channel is a great place to chill. It's free of spammers and scammers and filled with daily updates and other crypto stuff I spill. The only thing better is my weekly newsletter where you can get the full breakdown of my personal crypto portfolio. And once you've made mad gains, consider supporting us by buying a beanie, hoodie, sweater or tee with designs like these, only at the Coin Bureau. You can find my second channel, socials, telegram, newsletter and merch store using the links down below. Thank you for making it until the end. You are a true crypto friend. Farewell until next we meet again. Thank <laughs> you.